Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Game Changer. I'm Maryam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about and discussing the relationship between Pakistan and Qatar. Pakistan and Qatar share deep rooted and historic relationship that is based on mutual trust and respect. Qatar is one of the fastest growing economies of the world and Qatar has played a key role in different regional conflicts in resolving these conflicts as a mediator. When we talk about Pakistan and Qatar relationship, uh, the, de uh, the defense cooperation between uh, the relationship between Pakistan and Qatar is one of the key aspects of the bilateral relationship between the two countries. In today's program, we will be discussing how Pakistan and Qatar can further enhance these areas of cooperation and relationship. We will be also talking about Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's visit to Doha, Qatar, uh, who, is on a, who was on a two-day visit to Qatar to attend 5th United Nations Conference on Least Developed Countries. We will be talking about this conference as well. To discuss this and more, I'm joined in the studios by Mr. Shehjar Khan, who is Senior uh, Analyst and International Affairs Expert. Welcome to the program. And we are joined online by Dr. Hassan Javed, who is Economist and Senior Analyst. Welcome to the program, Dr. Hassan. And we are joined on phone line by uh, Anik Zafar, who is International Affairs Expert. Welcome to the program. So let me start with you, Mr. Shahjar, when we talk about uh, Qatar's strategic location uh, in the region. Uh, we know that it is emerging as, uh, an, as a strong economy, as well as a global key player when we talk about different conflicts. Uh, Afghanistan conflict in the recent part is an example of that. How do you see Qatar's location and this emerging role of Qatar? Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Mariam, for inviting me today to this program. So when we talk about Qatar, we have to uh, see that Qatar is relatively small country. Mm -hmm. It has a population of uh, around 2.7 uh, million people, but it has one of the highest GDPs in the world, which is around 258 billion dollars uh, last year. So we have to like understand that Qatar operates in a very geostrategic location, as you've mentioned, mm. and it has forged international alliances. For example, Qatar hosts one of the largest US bases outside of the mm. US uh, in Qatar. Other than that, very recently in 2019, Turkey also established a base over there and uh, there are like around 5,000 uh, Turkish uh, soldiers also posted there. Other than that, as you also mentioned that uh, Qatar also plays a very key vital role in the diplomatic front and it basically provides conflict resolution mm. uh, uh, initiatives mm. for various uh, conflicts around the world. Mm. So Qatar has basically played a very key role in the uh, and tried to resolve the Yemen conflict. Mm. Other than that, Qatar played a very key role in the Lebanon conflict as well. Very recently, when the U.S. basically uh, uh, went out of the of, uh, uh, Iran forces, nuclear uh, mm. deal, mm. so Qatar played a very important role in mediating between these two countries as well. And very recently, uh, as we all know, that Qatar uh, established uh, the first Taliban's office outside Afghanistan in 2013 and played a very key role in mediating the Doha peace talks between the US and Taliban, which led to the uh, eventual withdrawal of the US forces from uh, Qatar. So how do you see uh, Qatar's positioning in the you know, strategic location of the mm -hmm. Qatar and the key role it is playing in the region and as well as on the global stage as well in the context of its relations with Pakistan? So uh, Qatar is very rich in natural resources like uh, natural gas, oil. So Qatar has one of the largest reserves uh, in the GCC countries. So ever since uh, the Ukraine war has started, uh, Qatar's significance in the geo-strategic uh, uh, arena has increased many folds. Okay. Now that the European Union is moving away from the Russian uh, gas, uh, European Union is looking mm. at now mm. Qatar to ba basically mm. fulfill their needs. And as we know, Pakistan is also a very energy-starved mm. country with a population of over 220 million and people. Is, of course, and Qatar is one of the largest uh, exporters of liquefied natural gas yes, as well. and so even for Pakistan as well. Mm. One of the largest, uh, uh, Pakistan is one of the largest uh, energy importers and uh, most of the uh, LNG for Pakistan comes from Qatar. Mm. So when, uh, when it comes to that, uh, Qatar and Pakistan have a very uh, mutually dependent relationship and mm. Pakistan uh, uh, depends on Qatar for the fulfillment of its uh, energy needs. Of course, of course. Uh, Dr. Hassan, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Qatar, of course, they are multi-dimensional, uh, multi-faceted relationship. Uh, how do you see the key areas of cooperation between Pakistan and Qatar? 
Uh, see, the, um, I wanted to start with the specific and then I'll go general. So if I go start with the very generic, uh, specific information, that very first thing, first come first is the Sheikh uh, Tamim bin Hamad Al Tahani. Uh, I must appreciate that after uh, the deal, uh, I mean the last uh, tenure of the government, uh, it was very bad in three billion dollar, and they, uh, it was the reason which is the the reason for the delayment in the uh, lot many process, which is the multilateral, bilateral bonds and the trade loans. So that could be the part. And now it is, uh, I would call it is it is a, a, a damage control exercise by Prime Minister uh, Shahbaz Sharif. So what I would say is like the uh, uh, the the Sheikh uh, retreated uh, his keen interest in uh, socio-economic development and other uh, uh, rational things like the Qatar agrees to buy OGDCL, which is very much important. So that's why I said uh, I start with the specific thing, then I'll go generic. So one is the OGDCL, which is PPL shares. Uh, Qatar is uh, ready to uh, provide a Mirage uh, 2000 uh, fighter uh, aircraft to Pakistan. And then uh, Prime Minister has invited Qatar Qatar's 450 billion sovereign wealth fund to investment in Pakistan in energy and aviation sector, which is very much important. Before that, uh, the Pakistan investment in Qatar is mainly in real estate construction, machinery and technical service uh, techn uh, industry, and then is a, uh, so many businessmen and professionals playing a major role in banking and medical construction sector. Then recently, an agreement has been reached uh, to increase the number of Pakistan blue collar workers in Qatar to. Uh, mm. about uh, 100,000. So Qatar hosted around 250,000, uh, 250,000 Pakistani contributing to development of the both countries. And very important thing I would uh, I would like to share that it is one of the major important thing after uh, the magnanimous and uh, uh, flabbergasted thing. And the whole world was flabbergasted on the FIFA that how uh, it was the very first time when the Qatar opens their real economic strength then they are just not uh, uh, culturally uh, vibrant. They are just very strong in their uh, ideology. They are very uh, strong in their economic and very important thing, Qatar never put their all eggs in one basket. So their investment in the whole world, the most of their investment in the, uh, in LNG and power sector in US. Mm. So Qatar you, has diversified they are its... not daring to mm. that. So very important thing is the Qatar Global Education Foundation and education above all that is called EAA. So they discuss this EAA education above all with uh, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif, which is very important. Right, we will be, we will be then, coming towards part, that as well. So but I, I want to talk about the defense cooperation between state. Pakistan and Qatar, uh, Dr. Asnan. Like you mentioned about the FIFA World Cup, uh, of course, we know that uh, uh, security was provided by Pakistani uh, yes. army as well. So I want to uh, talk about the defense cooperation. Uh, uh, Mr. Anik Zafar, uh, can you provide an overview of the defense relationship between uh, Pakistan and Qatar and how it has evolved over the years? Pakistan was one of the first, uh, first two countries which uh, recognized the state of Qatar when it, uh, um, uh, it was declared as a separate state. Uh, and since then, Pakistan has helped uh, Qatar in developing its defense forces. There has been there have been many uh, Pakistani trainers in Qatar, and uh, obviously Qatar has a very very important role in the region. Pakistan Qatar uh, relationship uh, is also centered around uh, working together in uh, Afghanistan to resolve the issues between uh, Taliban and U.S. And now, as uh, uh, one of the eminent panelists uh, also discussed about Mirage 2000, which uh, uh, pa uh, Pakistan uh, uh, wants to buy from Qatar, these are used Mirage 2000, uh, and uh, both countries are uh, working out details on that. Uh, pa uh, Qatar also uh, uh, uses uh, uh, Pakistan's uh, trainer uh, uh, trainer plane for their air force. So there has been uh, a number of uh, occasions where both, both countries have worked together in, in defense and uh, strategic uh, issues and also cooperated on diplomatic front uh, in, in, in various, uh, uh, on various international issues. Uh, right, right. Also very important is that Pakistan plays a very uh, important role uh, in the region uh, when, it comes to their, uh, when, when it comes to the internal dynamics of Gulf politics. Uh, as you may be aware, that uh, uh, three or four uh, Gulf states, including Qatar, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, 
uh, all are very very important for pakistan and these also have their separate uh, geo strategic and economic agendas uh, and pakistan has been uh, successful in balancing uh, these relationships between these uh, uh, when it comes to bilateral relations with these uh, uh, countries but mr shehar i want to talk more about the defense cooperation because it is very important aspect of the relationship between the two countries when we talk about relationship between pakistan and qatar so uh, how do you see uh, the military uh, cooperation between the two countries of course pakistan has provided uh, uh, assistance to uh, qatari uh, you know defense uh, forces as well so uh, how do you see this cooperation and how this has uh, you know uh, helped qatari uh, defense uh, uh, you know um, capabilities so uh, mariam uh, qatar is a relatively peaceful country mm. operates in a very geo strategic location in the gcc right next to the middle east and that area is like a hub of uh, okay. conflict mm. so how qatar has basically uh, established itself as a geo strategic player is by uh, forging international alliances mm. by hosting the us uh, military base one of the largest in the world qatar in that way basically uh, makes sure that its uh, defense and strategic uh, needs are met through these uh, uh, to through outsourcing of like uh, the defense needs mm. when it comes to the cooperation between pakistan and qatar qatar plays a very geo strategic uh, uh, geo strategic role uh, in resolving conflicts that are affecting pakistan as well and pakistan establishment and the qatar security they basically cooperate uh, very deeply when it comes to resolving issues uh, related to afghanistan even during the withdrawal of the us forces pakistan and qatar coordinated mm. and basically facilitated so even though the talks the doha uh, peace talks they uh, took place in uh, doha they were initially initiated by the pakistani mm. Uh, mm. side and the americans were brought uh, to the table course, and so then this uh, of cooperation of course that is very uh, significant of course yes. uh, so how do you see uh, that this uh, defense relationship between pakistan and qatar fit into the larger geopolitical framework so now that uh, uh, the afghanistan uh, issues like still lingering like even though the us has basically withdrawn its forces mm -hmm. from afghanistan uh, what now basically awaits us is a bit of a security situation that is like emerging from afghanistan and other than that there is a mm. humanitarian issue that could uh, exacerb exacerb uh, could worsen and uh, qatar has a very important role in basically playing and like fixing that situation as well so now pakistan and qatar will be co coordinating and uh, partnering in the future in resolving this afghanistan situation other than that as we mentioned earlier as well qatar is like because of its like uh, uh, natural mm -hmm. resources it will play a very key role in resolving the uh, conflict when it comes to russia and ukraine and the mm -hmm. european union overall so now that uh, qatar will be providing lng and gas uh, resources to european union so that that could also like uh, develop in uh, some sort of interdependencies between uh, the european union and qatar and as the european union like moves away from the gas resources of mm. uh, russia uh, qatar's uh, significance in that region will increase again one important area that we basically miss out is uh, the investments qatar has made in projecting its soft power of course we will be talking we'll about talk investments about as well but uh, i want to discuss dr hasan when we talk about economic relations between uh, pakistan and qatar uh, we know that pm shehbaz sharif uh, met with the ceo of qatar investment authority so how do you see uh, the investment opportunities in qatar and enhancement of these opportunities specifically if we talk about the energy sector of pakistan see this is very much important like mansoor ibrahim the ceo of qia the uh, qatar investment authority that was very important meeting which we which they, he, they discussed the pakistan importing lng from qatar under two different uh, contracts signed by the uh, uh, by the prime minister and then there is a uh, uh, agreement between they will uh, uh, invest 3 million ton of lng per year from qatar energy under the deal from the uh, uh, jan uh, it was it was the deal uh, in two, uh, 2022 as uh, for the 10 years but it was there is a gap uh, there was a technical gap there was a bureaucratic gap and there are so many other things which has not been uh, discussed and they, there was a uh, cause for the delay but in contact in uh, with the uh, prime minister they have discussed the first qatar uh, pak qatar lng contract had been signed from 15 years beginning with the uh, 100 mm uh, mmcfd 
uh, one ship each month and that is very important and then is a later going up to the 500 mm cfd five ship a month at the rate of 13.37% of the brand which is very much important so in that case i'm uh, i mean as i'm talking uh, uh, about the economy but uh, one thing i have already uh, discussed but it was been just uh, passed away so i'll just wanted to put in uh, to that so qatar is also working on the eea so a prime minister uh, a handshake with on the uh, on this with the amir of qatar uh, on this uh, 9 9 lakh 60000 of the pakistan poorest out of the school children in the primary education over the next four years so th that is also very important not just uh, for the economic deal but uh, that is another thing but let me talk about the uh, many important acquisition of islamabad and karachi airports the meeting was informed that the qatar side noted that they are only interested if they includes the aeronautical income which is major part of the airport income and they are interested in the the pia any uh, attempt to only lease the retail uh, areas real estate development and will have the little chance of success then the uh, qia the qatar investment uh, authority requested to include the airport, uh, lahore airport in the deal qatar also requested the provided initial pia financial and operational uh, data at the earliest and then they are working on during the meeting of the finance minister with the ceo of the qia qatar expressed the desire of the acquire islamabad and karachi airport first and informed that the matter of the lahore airport may be dealt with the largest stage and then is the lng powered deal which is very much important and very much um, articulated thing in that way like sharing details about the acquisition of lng power plants by qatar investment authority qia and the vegan noted that the gases agreement gsa what we call it gsa was a issue by uh, uh, has been resolved now it was the it was the issue in the last tenure it was not resolved and now the gsa the g uh, the gas sales agreement is been resolved that uh, that re uh, profiling uh, still has to work by the finance minister uh, for finance ministry and then the acquisition of the two rlng uh, power plant uh haveli bahadur shah and the baloki finance uh, ba baloki so finance ministry informed uh, uh, that an exercise to address issue related to the balance sheet of the npp mcl is under way of the finance division additionally g2g framework and intergovernmental commercial uh, transaction act has been enacted i want to uh, ask uh, mr anik zafar about uh, the agriculture sector because that is also very important when we talk about uh, the relationship between pakistan and qatar how do you see that as you are aware that pakistan is primarily uh, an agri agriculture country we still have a uh, large tracts of land available where investment is required to uh, to uh, water these lands to develop these lands and uh, to make these lands start to producing uh, we have been in the last uh, few decades contemplating how we can uh, work with uh, gulf states including qatar to develop these uh, uh, lands and uh, there have been different models which have been discussed uh, and uh, uh, i think this will be a good initiative if we are able to come out uh, come up with a model where these countries can invest in our agriculture uh, develop new areas uh, where uh, uh, and 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 uh, bring in more scientific research uh, maybe we need to invest into areas where even saline water can uh, help water uh, crops and uh, pakistan can, uh, can can help Uh, produce crops which can feed these countries uh, requirements uh, for vegetables for fruits for grain of course of course so mr shahyar when we talk about these different areas of cooperation how do you see that this growing economic cooperation between uh, the two countries will be impacting impacting the geopolitics of the region south asian region middle east gulf countries so uh, when it comes to economic cooperation between um, uh, qatar and pakistan Uh, one key area is basically import of energy mm -hmm. and that is like something that we have to like look forward to and that is like somewhere the qatar investment authority has also shown mm -hmm. a lot of, of interest course, dr hasan has of course uh, highlighted yeah. that aspect so they have like shown a lot of interest in basically investing in solar parks mm -hmm. uh, in pakistan to basically uh, encourage alternative uh, energy resources other than that they have also shown a lot of interest in establishing lng plants 
So as soon as Pakistan like imports LNG, it can be processed here in L LNG terminals that are and there. How, in how would it impact the energy sector of Pakistan? So this will definitely help in lowering the cost of production and the transportation. So that's, as we know, that's like the largest part of our import bill. So that will definitely give Pakistan a relief when it comes to uh, importing energy from uh, Qatar. Mm -hmm. So that's like one area where a lot of uh, cooperation is taking place. Other than that, as uh, uh, it was also mentioned that Qatar has also uh, shown a lot of interest in Pakistan's airport, uh, mm -hmm. like air, airports and like uh, infrastructure as well. They want to basically take over the running of these airports. It mm -hmm. has to of be outsourced. Then, uh, has, uh, so these are like yeah, two key areas where a lot of cooperation is like uh, going on. Of Other course. than that, like there are like a lot of investments that Pakistanis also make in Qatar. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to real estate uh, sector, a lot of Pakistanis have invested uh, majorly yes. in uh, Qatar's uh, real estate uh, sector and uh, following that is the construction industry. So uh, Pakistanis ha are also providing uh, services uh, in uh, construction and uh, building in uh, Qatar. And a lot of Pakistani working professionals are uh, uh, providing their services in the banking and technology sector as well. And, and we there, know there that... There are a lot of areas of yeah. cooperation and we will be talking more about these uh, areas of cooperation, how to enhance these relations further, but we have to take... back we are talking about economic cooperation between Pakistan and Qatar. Dr. Hastain, uh, when we talk about these growing and enhanced relationship between Pakistan and Qatar in different uh, areas of investment, uh, so what are the challenges when we talk about these, uh, you know, enhanced cooperation in different sectors, the investment opportunities are there in Pakistan as well as in Qatar as well. What are the challenges and how to address those challenges? Uh, um, see, Maria, uh, before uh, coming to the point where the challenges comes in, so I just wanted to uh, place a quantum of the import and export, which is, if I talk about the imports, which is just about 2.66 billion during uh, uh, 2021, and then is a quantum of the export is about the 2, uh, 205.02 million. So there is a difference between imports and exports. So you, you can understand with the imports comes and exports is very much low. So we need to work and frame, uh, uh, create the so framework So what are the out. sectors in so which, which is, we need to invest to yeah, enhance very much, these? Very pertinent, very pertinent question, which is the major exports from uh, uh, exports should be to the Qatar is the rice, leather, textile, rugs, cotton yarn, uh, woven fabric and meat. And then is a major item of import from the Qatar, which is petroleum, of course, plastic or organic chemical and iron. But we need to think on other way around, which is more effective, which is the banking and insurance sector. And then they must, we must have to ask the Qatar to be the part of the uh, CPAC uh, agreements. And then we can have to work on, uh, on the attraction of FDI. So uh, Qatar has a major part in, uh, they can work on the, uh, uh, on the refined oil refineries, they, they can work over there in the minerals and mines, they can work in the Balochistan, they can work with the, uh, I mean, bilateral relationship in the, uh, in, in metal and other fields and other resources, even in the coal in the Balochistan. So we have to work on the different areas. So try to understand these are the many other categories. There is a 33 categories of the luxury and non-luxury item from mainly impacted of FMCGs uh, and, the, uh, and the franchise industry in the food and the beverages. But now a very much important point, I just wanted to point it out over here. Like there is a much export of the blue collar jobs. So there is a, initially there was a national vocation technical training uh, commission, uh, which is what we call it NAFTEC. And that is a challenging issue, by the way. And then there is a NAFTEC is already engaging in operation in an international market for its uh, youth, including high skilled workers. So one such example is the uh, uh, Takmol. Uh, uh, have you heard about the Takmol? I think it was a Takmol Saudi Arabia and the NAFTEC Pakistan are ex executing a joint skill testing certification program called Skills Verification Program 
that is called SVP for providing a competent skill workforce. So very important thing is we have to work on uh, the uh, job skill development, which is like uh, initially currently having a profile of the uh, four lakh and eighteen thousand two hundred and sixty-six skill uh, Pakistani youth, and more more than four thousand uh, four lakh seventy thousand job back then. Now, so but once uh, again, we are met with the inter, uh, internal challenges that have of course, prevented of its acceleration and ability to enhance. And last, last, very last point, and I just wanted to uh, pinpoint uh, uh, two, three important things. Major challenges, major challenges, so that are uh, in um, uh, the relevant ministries can work on that. One is the developed uh, market requiring high value added goods. The second is the low complementary and third is a halal certification. So developing of the dairies and other products, Pakistan is very much focal in that way. So we need to create the halal certificate so that we, our product goes all the way around the world. Of course. Of course. So when we talk about challenges, uh, uh, Mr. Shehjar, uh, what are uh, challenges when we talk about uh, enhancement of these relationships between the uh, two countries? Basically, import-export relations of uh, uh, Pakistan and Qatar. Dr. Hasnan has also uh, already mentioned that Pakistan is basically a net importer mm. of uh, goods and services from Qatar. Mm. And there are like certain areas where a lot of cooperation and a lot of exports can be done. And we have to like realize that Qatar is a net importer of food items mm. from across the globe. Of course, okay. So uh, when it comes to the halal meat industry, mm. there's like a lot of potential over there. And as Do Dr. Hastan has also mentioned that uh, certifying our halal meat is becoming an issue because uh, it probably doesn't like uh, basically come up to the international standards or the uh, uh, frameworks mm. at which uh, Qatar uh, operates on. So there needs to be like some sort of a cooperation in that case or capacity building exercises that can be done in which basically we can basically tap into that market as well. So let's talk about uh, the people to people context. Uh, we know that how successfully uh, Qatar has conducted this FIFA World Cup. So how do you see Pakistan can enhance cultural relationship and people to people contacts between Pakistan and Qatar? So as I mentioned that Pakistani workforce uh, uh, abounds to over 250,000 mm. that is like operating uh, in Pakistan and providing services in various fields. Mm. Uh, uh, those fields are banking, it's like construction, it's like IT and obviously medical services as well. So our doctors are also like traveling to Qatar to provide uh, services. Other than that, when it came to uh, hosting the FIFA International World, World Cup, it was the most watched World Cup uh, in the history of FIFA. And uh, when it comes to the construction and when we already talked about the security that was provided by Pakistan security forces. So that was like somewhere where that co cooperation will continue in the future as well. And there's like a lot more uh, to be gained. Other than that, uh, when it comes to um, exports that we keep on discussing. So uh, Pakistan being an agricultural country, there are like a lot of like areas where we can export for, uh, food items to the Qatari economy and one of the key items that Pakistan is exporting even right now is the rice. Hmm, of course. So Dr. Hassan, when we talk about uh, Pakistan's relationship with Qatar, of course we know there is a lot of potential. You have mentioned key areas of cooperation, there is a lot of potential, but what are implications of these enhanced relationship between the two countries on other regional players? One of the most important thing is that the Qatar is the invest. They have the biggest investment portfolio. Now they they are the rich people, by the way. So uh, if they are working for the peace, they are working for the integration. And the FIFA was the magnanimous. FIFA was the magnanimous. They showed their culture integration, and they wanted to work with the Pakistan. And that is a very powerful thing, and very uh, I mean excellent in a multilateral or bilateral. But they will also work in the peace negotiation with the uh, with Afghanistan so Doha was the one of the president so we need to work more and more uh, with the Qatar and we have to work uh, uh, on the basis of the economic pivot on the basis of economic bilateral and multilateral relationship we have to we have to ask uh, to come under the CPAC and then we can make the uh, three-party joint venture of course, venture. Of course uh, I want to talk about CPAC as well Dr. Hassan so, what but, are the major but, projects or initiatives of which Qatar can become part of 
I mean, like there are a lot, many industries they can work on it. So they just wanted to invest our whole uh, working lot over here, the skilled labor, there, the workers, their associations, and all the other things uh, related to, as I told you earlier, in the NEFTEC and the TEFTA. So we have the lot workforce. So they just wanted to come uh, come to Pakistan, and as Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif in, invite the Emir of Qatar to come here with the business concern and very much important i just mm. wanted to give a suggestion that there must be b2b and g2d relationship and there must be the conference the way like for example they have the 100 businessmen from the qatar 100 business from the men uh, from the pakistan they have to sign the agreements before the selecting chapters and agreement for example it is a plastic for example it is the other uh, materials so if they have to work on a very specific way it is it should not be just a conference where everybody come and give, give the keynote speech and just go uh, go away so uh, what I wanted to say is there is a lot, much potential we must have to do on the uh, on the day agreement. On the day agreement, of course, means of course, there you are, must you are be talking about on, agreements. On but day. what specific steps can be taken by the government of Pakistan to facilitate uh, Qatar in invest in, in increasing investments in uh, you know CPAC? See, I just, uh, I, I mean, of course, I don't want to discuss over there because GCC, uh, I mean, uh, already told you to, uh, I mean, discuss the uh, one window operation and they have to uh, make the same authority as the CPEC authority and then they have to, uh, I mean, complete. Uh, give the overview and orientation about the Pakistani areas where they can, uh, I mean, invest better. So, Balochistan is a much prominent place for that way. So, uh, for the record, we, we can make a joint venture exercise over there and sit, so they can, uh, I mean, geopolitical or uh, topical uh, uh, exercise over there so they can understand where the business should come in. And that is a uh, uh, much important thing so that roadblocks won't go on and investment uh, plans and solutions can come up. Of course, of course. So, Mr. Shahjar, when we talk about CPAC, uh, Qatar is, of course, showing interest in investment projects, uh, different investment projects in CPAC. So, uh, how do you see the future prospects for this uh, growing uh, relationship between Pakistan and Qatar? So, there are like two key areas where uh, previously the Qatar investment authorities have shown a lot of uh, interest mm -hmm. in Pakistan. So one was Gawadar. Hmm. So in Gawadar, uh, Pakistan is uh, hmm. talking definitely in the energy sector. It's also talking on desalination plants. Hmm. So those are the two areas where Qatar has shown a lot of interest. Other than that, uh, uh, previously, there was like a lot of uh, uh, discussions on Qatar's basic, uh, Qataris basically investing in the hospitality sector of in course. Pakistan hmm. as well. Hmm. So even like a lot of business delegations came from Qatar and they basically went to uh, the northern areas of Pakistan, mm. where they showed key interest in basically developing uh, uh, tourist resorts and uh, hospitality. So that's like one area where there is a future uh, uh, cooperation as well. And they were also like planning on investing in the special economic zones of Pakistan, where they would like establish uh, entities that would operate across Pakistan based out of the special economic zones. So how do you see uh, Pakistan's relationship with uh, with Qatar would, would evolve in the future uh, when we see these uh, you know huge investments that Qatar is planning to make in Pakistan? There is definitely a need to basically increase the interdependency when it comes to economic ties between between uh, Qatar and Pakistan. Right now, we're only looking at it from the lens of importing energy. Mm. And uh, Qatar being a huge economy, and as we've like also previously discussed that the Qatar Sovereign Wealth Fund is over $450 billion. Mm. And Pakistan is in dire need of attracting foreign direct investment. So there are like a, very area, a lot of like areas where we can ask or basically attract Qatari businessmen and their uh, investment authorities to come and basically uh, invest in Pakistan's infrastructure as well hospitality sector, special economic zones, mm. uh, developing oil infrastructure, gas infrastructure. So there are like a lot of like areas where we can attract and uh, there's like a lot more work to be done over there. Of course, there's a lot more work to be done. And we are talking about bilateral relations between Pakistan and Qatar. We will take a short break here. OECD countries must be fulfilled. We must address the increasingly unsustainable debt burden of many LDCs. 
it is a matter of great concern that six LDCs are classified as suffering from the debt burden, while 17 are at high risk of debt distress. We must provide universal access to social protection in order to support the most needy and vulnerable. We also need to reform the unequal international financial architecture, make it people-centric and international technology compact aligned with the SDGs should be adopted. It should offer easy access to the developing countries to relevant advanced technologies, develop their productive capacities and bridge the digital divide. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has addressed the 5th United Nations Conference on Least Developed Countries. Uh, this conference takes place every 10 years and uh, the basic purpose is to put the agenda of uh, least developed countries to the international forefront. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Stan, when we uh, talk about uh, this important visit of Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif uh, to Doha, Qatar, and you have listened to the soundbite, uh, how do you see Pakistan's perspective on the socio-economic challenges faced by uh, these least developed countries? We know that there are six least developed countries that are still on the list. See, a very pertinent point uh, the Prime Minister uh, raised up there like least developed countries, why we are coming into the least developed countries? Of course, there is equality. If there is equality, there is a freight charges, this is, there is a preferential trades, but there is there must be an unequal way. So all should not be in the equal way. So clemity, clemity does not belong to us. The the carbon uh, carbon emission is uh, a carbon emission or carbon production is not does not belong to us. So prosperity in other capacity building problem, the power eradication, capacity building and innovation and other more um, many other things. Uh, and we were the uh, we we were the victim of the COVID-19. We, we haven't developed so those big come. Uh, I mean the unipolar and the bipolar two the two bigger powers can do whatever they wanted to do. But sustainable graduation and we are the victim of everything. So why we are come under the least developed countries? So prime minister raised up the right, very right. important question. Pakistan so is not we have the part of these 46 the countries that we are talking about. Right, Pakistan we is not the past of, the, of course, Pakistan is not the par part of this list, but let's talk about Mr. Sheryar when we talk about the major challenges. What are the major challenges in your opinion faced by uh, these least developed countries? Of course, uh, Prime Minister has pointed out the climate change is one of the issues. Uh, what's your take on this? So Pakistan is playing a very leading role when it comes to raising the voice of the collective global south of mm, the world of course. at this uh, conference of least developed mm. countries. So, uh, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has uh, very rightly pointed out certain challenges that the uh, least, development, uh, least developed countries are facing. So, uh, the key challenge being the global uh, economic environment after the post-pandemic era. Mm. So, a lot of like global value chains when it comes to food, when it comes to energy, they are being disru disrupted because of the catastrophes basically uh, coming from climate change and also conflict. So these are the few areas where uh, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has rightly raised the voice and I mm. think collectively he has represented mm. the countries of the global south. Of course, when we talk about collective role, what role can uh, regional cooperation play in mm. uh, you know, promoting the issues and raising the issues of these least developed countries? Because we know that uh, six countries have already graduated from the list of these least developed mm. countries. Unfortunately, two countries are not even included in these uh, 46 countries, mm. uh, Afghanistan and Myanmar, mm. uh, because the UN doesn't recognize their governments right now, so they're not even in the list. Other than that, uh, the challenges when it comes to global connectivity and raising the economic profile of these countries, uh, debt restructuring will play a very important and key role. Mm. And as even in the soundbite, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif was uh, discussing, uh, an overhaul mechanism of the global financial frameworks. Mm. So all of these countries are highly indebted and they have to like pay a lot of like financial dues to international financial institutions. So there is a definitely a need to basically restructure the loan uh, uh, environment for these countries mm. and Pakistan is also included in that because Pakistan is also a very debt uh, distressed country. Mm. So there needs to be uh, an evolution 
in uh, the global financial frameworks which have to convert from financial needs to more people centric policies that mm. need to be developed and i think uh, that is one area where imf and other international financial multilateral institutions that basically provide loans for development uh, development of these countries they need to basically overhaul the way they basically provide of loans of course and make them more people centric policies of rather course. than finance centric of course but when we talk about uh, these you know conferences like uh, these le for least developed countries what progress has been made by uh, you know these conferences so far these conferences take place every 10 years uh, in achieving the sustainable development goals so uh, the overall uh, attainment of the goals has always been a challenge mm. because uh, it's very difficult for developing countries to basically come out from the distress mm. of the covid induced uh, economic uh, downturn so it's very like difficult to basically overhaul the economic policies and basically start growth at the level that was there uh, pre pandemic uh, era and uh, as mentioned earlier uh, debt restructuring and debt mm -hmm. uh, payment uh, schedules they have basically caused a lot of hindrances when it comes to economic development of these countries so uh, th in the international community and the developed world that needs to come together and develop new frameworks and new uh, paradigms in which these uh, developed least developed uh, developed countries can be supported and uh, capacitated in uh, reaching their financial goals right doctor sen when we talk about uh, different issues climate change is of course one of the major yeah. uh, issues so how to address uh, the issue of climate change uh, uh, for least developed countries and what role can international community play to facilitate these countries yes uh, the debt facilitating of course uh, on on the basis of the climate on the basis of other of course we are the uh, big, uh, biggest victim of the 30 billion dollar in the rehabilitation for the balochistan and the sel so we, we have uh, and the cop 27 was the uh, uh, w w was the uh, i mean very much presidented uh, conference on that so uh, this is also the uh, uh, program action under the fifth un conference uh, on the least developed countries they are also working on the uh, climate uh, issues so we have to they have to work for the uh, debt restructuring and rollovers for the pakistan and uh, specifically for the pakistan so that we cannot be the part of the least developed country but for the least developing country there is a poverty eradication building capacity leveraging the power for the science technology as well as in uh, innovation enhance international trade as well as regional integration is very much important and then is a sport structure transformation uh, drived prosperity and a uh, very uh, pertinent and very focused areas at tackling covid and there are few many variants mm. and the uh, uh, i mean bio uh, mm. i mean weaponization so i just don't want to mention this but we have to uh, i mean world will suffer more than uh, other variants of the covid so we have to be protected and we have to work on it and then is a the climate change and uh, building resilience and then is a mobile and uh, mobilize the international part partnership to enable sustainable gradu course, graduation course, so but, uh, let's talk uh, so about the role of for these, these developed G2G, countries in yeah how can least how can these ldcs can play an important role in shaping the agenda and outcome of the conference because they are the effective countries see the they, they first they have to work for their internal mechanism they have to re, they ha, they have to work for the transformation and reform they have to build up the 30 most major reform and then the five reforms on the finance on the economy on the infrastructure on the development and the power so these are the five area they have to work on it so first come first is the power if there is a no power means uh, power generation from the uh, uh, renewable energy lng whatever they want so then is the production so pr the much production is goes a much high way, way. so uh the, the the countries like qatar and the developed countries and then there is an opac so must have to opac must have to create the wage uh, wages and the uh, oil rates uh, and lesser uh, lesser than their, their equality so course, they have to, to uh, provide the lesser oil of course in the facilitation way so there is a framework for the g2g framework intergovernmental commercial transaction and act has been enacted Of course uh, Mr Shahjar uh, this is the fifth uh, LDCs conference what lessons can be learned from the past uh, LDCs because this conference is still going on uh, from 5th March to uh, till uh, you know 9th March uh, so that these countries more of the countries can graduate uh, from uh, the list 
So there are like yeah. certain areas that are being discussed on the mm. agenda when it comes to uh, this conference this mm. time around. So trade facilitation, regional integration is on top of the agenda. So that's like one area which is uh, uh, where there needs to be a lot more uh, enhancement and cooperation. And that's where a lot of like developed countries can also pitch in and uh, invest in infrastructure pro uh, projects which can basically enhance regional integration as well. Other than that, uh, post-COVID uh, reconstruction, post-COVID uh, uh, related uh, economic packages, that's like some th some uh, an area where uh, cooperation can be done. Other than that, uh, building climate resilience, that's like on top of the agenda be because the least yeah. developed countries are unfortunately the worst ex affected when mm. it comes to the catastrophes related to climate change. Mm. So that's like one area where I think there's a, a sense in the developed, developed countries as well, where they can basically cooperate and help uh, the LDCs to basically build their resilience against uh, and climate adaptation against uh, uh, catastrophes that are induced by climate change. Uh, of course, uh, and uh, Dr. Asen, quickly uh, some suggestions that how can these LDCs uh, utilize digital technologies and other uh, such technologies to harness uh, the potential and meet the sustainable development goals? So first, they need to understand that the economy is the fundamental thing. So there are many areas like machinery and chemical, electronic machinery, vehicles, um, and then the, 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 then the commodities. The most important part is commodities. So the least developed countries can uh, uh, create the export base for the, all the countries, and they have to create the uh, commodity elsewhere, the specified, and the shipping boards, floating structure, pharmaceutical, and arm and ammunition part and the uh, uh, other things so they have to develop the export base as much as they can and then it's the preferential trade in the other countries so they have to uh, quickly develop the relationship with the GCC so of course uh, these countries wanted to invest in the different countries so investor must invest in the these uh, the least developed country uh, they have the much capacity to develop so many things and uh, uh, so course, many areas rather goes to the smuggling areas rather goes to the subsidies rather goes to the other areas so we uh, uh, and uh, 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 and the debt projection so we have uh, they have to develop the restructuring on the financial area and the economy so that they can prosper they can be more um, uh, uh, i mean developed uh, in, in a better way so their industry and the uh, the people can progress in a better way of course, Mr. Mr. Shahjar, when we talk about these least developed countries, uh, what needs to be done by these countries to promote uh, greater participation in uh, you know, a global stage, in global politics? Because uh, you have already mentioned that two countries uh, are still not in the list. What needs to be done? So uh, first of all, the LDCs uh, that we talk about, they will have to like look internally first. Mm -hmm. And then they will have to like develop uh, their local regulations and uh, uh, rules and laws of governing and like attracting foreign investment. And they have to basically uh, streamline those processes first before attracting international investment. So that's like one area in which they would have to look first inwards and develop policies and uh, uh, to attract foreign direct investment from uh, developed countries. So that's like one area where they have to like work. Then uh, another area where there needs to be a lot of cooperation is basically to lessen the digital divide that is like emerging between the LDCs and the rest of the world. Mm. So there needs to be a lot of uh, uh, investment when it comes to enhancing uh, cooperation, when it comes to providing internet for all. Mm. And uh, as you know, a lot of like uh, uh, international bodies uh, uh, basically call uh, internet a basic human right. Mm. So that's like one area where a lot of investment can be done. Then using innovative digital technologies to provide services to the people. That's like one area where uh, a lot of cooperation can also happen. So these are like some areas where uh, there needs <coughs> to be some like inward reflection and uh, cooperation from the international community as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sher Yar Khan, for joining in today's program. Thank you very Thank much, you. Uh, Dr. Hasnain Jawed, for joining in today's program. Thank you, Mr. Anik Zafar, for joining in today's program. In today's program, we talked about uh, the enhanced relationship between Pakistan and Qatar. And when we talk about the potential, there is a lot of potential uh, of uh, increasing and uh, enhancing the relationship between the two countries. We also discussed.
uh, about uh, the PM's visit to this important fifth uh, UN conference on uh, least developed countries. Uh, 46 uh, least developed countries are home to more than 1.1 billion people in the world and international community uh, needs to do more to help and assist these countries. That's all from Game Changer tonight.